My name is Green Hornet. What I do is at the moment lots of Bitcoin trading. Usually it's OTC, which means peer to peer. I heard about Bitcoin when it was one dollar from a close friend of mine. That at the moment he's multi multi millionaire. Talk to us about that day. Your friend is explaining it to you. What's going through your head? Thought it's a cool idea. Bitcoin is one dollar. He's already buying and mining like crazy. I am interested in the idea. However, unfortunately, at the time, I had a different things in my mind. Basically, I was divorcing, so didn't pay much attention to it. Now, what happened later? A few months, few months later, he was divorcing. By the way, at the same same time as me, and that was at the time when Bitcoin dropped from 260 bucks more or less to about 70 and he's buying like crazy bitcoin on the exchanges i said what the heck why are you buying like crazy it's just dropped like crazy yes because it's at the bottom and i'm buying i want to buy in the end bitcoin was at 153 dollars up from 70 and he left canada and he was the only person that i knew that he knew anything about bitcoin and i told him listen sell me two thousand dollars worth of bitcoin you're going away you're not coming back, sell me $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. He said, no, I'll sell you only one. I said, why? You have a lot. No, because it's going to go up like crazy. I said, you're crazy. You have lots. Sell me $2,000 worth. He said, no, I'll sell you only one. Half a, half a year later from that $153, Bitcoin went up all the way to $1,100, another high. And I call him. How the heck did you know that it's going to go up like that, like crazy? Well, just that's the market. That's that's the way it is. And I still didn't do anything. Then it crashed to four hundred eighty dollars, probably around eight hundred dollars back. That's when I started trading OTC. There was a there is still a website called localbitcoins.com. That's where the uh, OTC trading takes place. Used all kinds of methods of trading and was happy with a few percentage points. Had all kinds of experiences with trading on a bad note that you can imagine in the world was reversed on me. Every single one. What do you mean? Somebody pays you with PayPal can be reversed. Somebody pays you with e-transfer can be reversed. Somebody pays you with draft can be fake. Somebody pays you with wire. I had wires reversed. Anything goes in a Bitcoin world. Only cash and Bitcoin is not reversible, period. Believe it or not that I was at one of the first days of Ethereum. I met Vitalik and I met uh, Antoni Dioro. And at the time when they started selling Ethereum, I didn't buy anything. I could barely understand Bitcoin. And Ethereum to me was non-understandable. Couldn't understand any, any of it. Plus they have a few screw ups along the way and I said well I'm just doing Bitcoin because I can understand some of it on Ethereum forget about it for a time being trading between the exchanges and, and so on there's at the moment there's over 10,000 different cryptocurrencies some of them are good some of them are not some of them are, are scams Bitcoin Ethereum is here to stay like a US dollar to the world being currency through which all other cryptos are being exchanged to and then cashed out or sold very easily through the exchanges through the Bitcoin ATMs through uh, OTC markets decentralized exchanges etc. I know about Euro families and you know my parents would say what the fuck are you doing there's a lot of skepticism were you met with a lot of ridicule and People asking you, you know, what do you think you're doing? You know, you think you're the next, uh, uh, you know, uh, Warren Buffett? And like, you know, did, did you get, did you get uh, laughed at at first when you, uh, when you jumped in? Yes, a little bit. Maybe not laughed at, but... Uh... I got for sure close friends of mine uh, didn't believe in it. They couldn't understand it. Maybe only right now some of them are basically looking at it as something that's uh, because it's in a uh, mainstream media news. They are looking at it whether they like it or not. They look at it that that's something something real. And I want you to tell us what you were talking to us about earlier when the cameras weren't rolling. That you said that you should be a crypto billionaire by now. Was that? Was that hyperbole or were you being serious? No, I'm serious. Nah, I don't know how to. You ask me. Okay. How? No. What since. No, no, no. Since. Oh, okay. Since you are early adopter, 
<laughs> Since you started early, how come you're not on? Uh, you're still in Canada, not not being multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire. Where even though I started early, it doesn't mean that I have a lot. I have a lots of screw ups, fuck up. And uh, for a long, long period of time, it wasn't my first uh, line of work or investment. From crypto point of view, however, not to the point like lots of people that they started even three years ago, that they've been brave enough to invest uh, uh, some borrowed money. I'm a little bit older, so I'm a little bit more caution, caution or uh, skeptical and uh, slower, so to speak. Not brave enough to, uh, to um, put it all in, so to speak. Uh, however, the run was fairly good, especially in 2017. That was cra probably craziest times uh, in, my, in my Bitcoin uh, and crypto career. Things were going really crazy, actually, at the time, because uh, week from week, all kinds of different cryptocurrency projects were going really vertical crazy and uh, uh, really good. Talk to us about... Fuck ups? Fuck up. You know, okay, or... I can write a book about fuck-ups. <laughs> I can write a book about fuck-ups. It just it wouldn't be enough time here to, to do that. However, I can tell you one interesting fuck-up. Well, like I said, I had a many, many uh, payment, uh, uh, payment methods reversed. Uh, usually the worst scenarios are uh, when you're dealing with cash. You can get robbed, you can get cheat, cheated, you can get uh, uh, different, there's, there's, there is and there is still, still is so many different, different things that, that can go wrong when you are dealing with, uh, with cash trading because Bitcoin is not reversible. As I said earlier, everything else is reversible. I had a personal gun in hand kind of scenarios. I had my head split open. I had my, I still have my finger cut. My tandem uh, is cut on my finger. I had multiple payment reversals done, including wires. Everything is just a learning curve in a sense that even all of those bad stories all together in today's terms, in today's money, it's a lot of money, lots of money. Walk us through that, uh, back up a little bit. You mentioned there was violence done to you. Yep. Can you talk about it? Sure I can. Yeah, no problem. Go Where? into detail and why was this violence done to you and, and, uh, what, what were they hoping for? Very simple. It was a setup, not only on me, only general on Bitcoin cash traders by a group of people. They would say that we have a Bitcoin for sale, meet us here or there. At the time, it usually be some Tim Hortons or cafe or whatever. And they are saying they have a Bitcoin for sale. They don't. They want your cash. During the transaction, basically the guys, uh, the two guys, one was like uh, assist, uh, assisting, another one was basically... Uh, main guy and he basically turned around and he's showing gun and, and a knife because we both were on the ice it was in January or February basically he wasn't stable I wasn't stable but he he was able to hit me in the head I had a stitches to, to my head and uh, cut me on the finger but they didn't manage to get anything from me then of course police and such and, and whatever have you meaning How meaning cash, cash? three thousand dollars mere three thousand dollar cash that's what your life is worth these days. You see? Listen, this is, this is bank statistics. Average gun robberies are around two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 cash. That's how much they got away with. And they go to jail for one, two years. Can you believe this? This is, this is Bitcoin. This is different, right? However, you, ha you can understand right now to what extent people, robbers can go to get very little. What was going through your mind when you're showing up for this transaction and you got a gun in your face? Let me put it this way. I am not a normal guy. <laughs> Why? Because I had a little bit of uh, karate training. training. So 80%, 90% people, they, and I was told by, by different, different, different professionals, 80-90% people, they freeze, they just don't do nothing. Not that I kicked the shit out of the guy or, or anything like that. However, uh, I was able to, to the certain, ex to the certain, not thinking, thinking basically more survival slash defense. And yeah, I got cut on everything else. To me, it didn't matter. Like you're in a different st state of mind if you are trained to the certain extent. Not that I am like Bruce Lee or anything like that, but you just think differently. Instant kicked in. 
in, instant instant scenario, instant kick. Yeah, and, instant kick. Inst yeah exactly. Yeah. So instant. However, that kind of from somebody who's outside who doesn't have that uh, situation, it, to, it thinks totally totally different. People freeze in general. People freeze. They are like stone and uh, attackers. They know it, and that's what they are. And in this society here, what they do is, the, for whatever reason, they feel entitled to steal, cheat, and and such in order to get the money or get the Bitcoin. They feel entitled, simple, like it, it, it's just, just like that. And because Bitcoin is not reversible, so they will use any means, some even very smart, to basically reverse the payments or cheat it this way or that way and, and so on. Do you remember the specific transaction? Do you remember what it was? Well, I have another very interesting transaction. Let's hear it. Uh, that happened uh, in a hospital. We met in a hospital. I meet the guy in a hospital. He's got, how do you call them, syringes in his hands. He comes down from, from up on the top. We are doing cash transaction. $8,000 cash transaction. The guy looks like very weak and everything else. He gives me cash. I give him Bitcoin. And suddenly he managed to grab the cash and he became master master runner. Runs away with the cash like crazy. Of course, I run after him. Luckily enough, in a parking lot, there is a cab driver that turns out to be that he used to be a cop. He knew what to do and basically we got the guy. So, he got charged, but I never got my bitcoins back. And at the time, $8,000, it was 10 bitcoins. So then basically, uh, I shifted to lots of online uh, trading, whether to be transfers, uh, wires and such and, and so on. And that was interesting curve, but uh, shortly enough, like as I said earlier, even those transactions are reversible. Bank will tell you that they are not. Somebody else will tell you they are not, but they are reversible. So, long story short, do I regret anything? No, I do not. There's lots of learning curve in a, in a whole situation. Yeah, of course, trauma, whatever you want to call it. Uh, would I do it again? I'm doing it again. You just have to put uh, all kinds of uh, uh, safety protocols in, in in place and that's about it listen bitcoin is here to stay that's number one number two they, they are other cryptocurrencies that they are faster more robust different projects that they are in a sense could be better than bitcoin but however bitcoin is the main cryptocurrency through which everything else is trading so anything any any other 10,000 cryptocurrencies in the end they are denominated in bitcoin so what, what that means is that Bitcoin is like US dollar to the world that as we know it. And what that does is that it, even though it's fairly slow, sometimes fees are uh, transaction fees are very expensive. But it's here, it's been for a long period of time. So many different governments, banks, institutions try to kill it, hack it or whatever to be controlled. It. For the most part, it's just strengthened the Bitcoin network and the people around it. There is new shift right now. After last G20 meeting, basically they created new organization that is aimed to basically KYC Bitcoin to oblivions. What I mean by that is basically because they cannot kill the Bitcoin, the only way to kill Bitcoin would be to switch off electricity in the whole world or switch off internet in the whole world forever or for extended periods of time so they decided that okay let's kyc all the bitcoin exchanges and anybody that trades bitcoin atm uh, operators and such kyc meaning know your client same idea as when you open bank account you have to show your uh, driving license a passport and such and everything else so basically they can control any larger transactions what is that gonna do is very simple. It's going to put out of business smaller oper operators and that's going to make easier for them to control big companies because they will know all the transactions that they are going through. A long story is that Bitcoin is here to stay. It's acknowledged in Canada last year as a currency, as money. And you can, if you are totally not careful, but very enthusiastic, you can make some money, some money with it. Whether it is trading, whether it's buying other cryptos, whether exchanging, uh, buying on the exchanges. And uh, regardless what you think about it, whether you're going to be part of it or not, lots of people want to be part of it. It's something new, new industry, and it's here to stay. 
yes, maybe we're going to have a digital dollar. Maybe we're going to have a digital uh, uh, central bank currencies, but still they're going to be based on, on uh, blockchain technology. All this crypto got me lit. I watched it double with some days. People come in and they fade. But this is the life that I made. Watch a god that come by the double. When they go down, I see you in trouble. The market is tricky, we gotta stay humble. But don't think this is my That's first enough. time in the jungle.